do you think Yale is going to help New Haven weather the recession better than some other comparable cities? Uh, oh, absolutely. I mean, did Yale help New Haven get through the recession, through the depression? Well, I think that the, the, I mean the employment, the construction employment was huge, and and it was largely um, uh, ethnic workers. A lot of it, and and it actually enabled a lot of. They did a lot of recruitment for skilled craftsmen in Italy, bringing families of people who were already in New Haven. Oh. Um, so, so there was a uh, there was like so a, even though we had a depression, you actually couldn't find enough workers in New Haven. <coughs> skilled stone workers, cutting. Stone, do, stone, cutting. Like stone cutting. Yeah, the, the specialized work on the stone. Because you look at these residential colleges, they're very heavily ornamented. They're really, you know, it's a lot of they're beautiful craftsmanship. They're really beautiful. Yeah, yeah. I always think of the depression when I went by the law school and I see the gargoyles. Yeah. yeah. So let's fast forward now to 2008, actually 2009, 2010. So now here you are. Do you look back at that period? Do you see Yale playing, playing a similar role, keeping New Haven aloft and people working? I hope so. I mean, you know, we, we did announce a slowdown on our capital program. Right. Uh, so I'm delayed a year, the yeah, bio building. Yeah, but it's a slowdown on a very big construction program. So it'll still be a major source of employment. I mean, we, you know, what this means is um, at least the next few years, we'll still be doing construction work of over half a billion dollars a year. Wow. So it's a very substantial. That investment. includes two new residential colleges, the new political science complex. The political science is in process. Everything that's in process is going forward. Two new, two new utility projects, big ones. The uh, uh, conversion of the medical school's power plant to a cogeneration plant mm -hmm. uh, is going forward, and that that has wonderful green properties as well. I think it, it, that project alone gets about 15 percent of our targeted greenhouse gas reduction. Um, then the then the, um, the there'll be a modification of our. Um, uh, Central power plant, and then a new chiller plant, just you know, for chilled water, uh, in Science Park, that will service the um, uh, facilities right around there, but also will service um, uh, some of the new new buildings that will be coming on in the next decade on Science Hill, plus the new residential call. Rick, as an economist, when you look at what um, we're facing now with the downturn, mm -hmm. how bad are recession are we getting into, and what kind of parallels do you see to past recessions and the depression? Well, this is a pretty scary one because it's, it's, uh, it's, it, it looks deeper in many ways and with more institutions, uh, central financial institutions affected than at any time since the Great Depression. I have to say, I'm not, I think the, the whole period of the last few months has been very badly handled by... by I mean, letting Lehman Brothers and fail, but then bailing out AIG. It's the whole thing, having completely inconsistent approaches to, you know, a series of financial institutions. There was, there was no theme. You can't figure out, if you're the financial market trying to get stability and predictability, you couldn't, you couldn't infer, you, get to, you know, AIG got such a different deal yeah. than Bear Stearns and... and so they were making it up on the fly, right? And in ad hoc ways that, that you know, that, 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 you know, in one case, you know, in this case punish the equity holders, in this case punish the senior debt holders, in this case punish the you know, the managers, in this case, make the whole firm go under and punish all the employees as well. There's no, there's no rhyme or reason. And so if you were, if you're trying to stabilize the credit markets, you know, you'd like to know, for example, that, well, all these deals are going to, you know, respect the seniority of bondholders or equity holders. That would be, it would have been smart to be considered. What you do as a mayor or as governor of New Haven or Connecticut? Uh, it's, it's a job I would not want to have. You'd call Rick Levin a lot, right? What? You'd call Rick Levin on the phone a lot. <laughs> That's a really tough. Yeah. I, I, have a, I have tremendous, uh, tremendous uh, sympathy for what John DeStefano has to face now. It's going to be really hard. We're going to help him as much as we can to try to, you know, get state resources directed towards. Cities. Have you found in your 15 years that Yale has influence at the state level on those kind of questions? Do yes. Senate Democrats or the governor's office listen yeah. to? It? Yeah, we, we, had a, we had a very good relationship with Roland. Yeah, I even though I remember that. I mean, obviously Roland's administration ended tragically, but there, that was a situation where we would get together every year with the city leaders and the mayor, and Yale would kind of convene a summit meeting between the governor. I remember, and yeah, your house. Yeah. yeah, and it was very effective. I mean, we, we, we you know, we, we got a lot of money from the state for good projects. Because we were able to demonstrate to the governor to the governor that we had consensus 
in the business community among the aldermen. And you played a convening role in that. Yeah. Now, what's happened at Arrell? Why hasn't that continued? I, you know, it, 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 there hasn't been the, the interest in sort of continuing that kind of discussion. I think part of it was the mayor ran against her. That, that does sort of make it a little harder for having a having that kind of relationship. So I think that it sort of fell apart. You know, I think after after once the mayor was clearly going to be running against her, but we'll do our best, and we have a good relationship with the governor, and we, we, we would certainly want to help him. How's this going to play out with union relations? So you have the, you had these years of peace through that last agreement. You've been working on best practices, yeah. and now you have a contract coming up a year and a half right in the smack in the middle of the recession. Is that going to give you a lot more leverage, you think, in dealing with the unions? Do you have signals of what this is going to mean? Well, we've been, we've been having lots of discussions with our, you know, with our union leaders, and I, I must say, you know, the relationships have never been better. I mean, we we we, we we really have had, you know, excellent conversations. I think there's a level of trust that's been built up that's unprecedented. We just have way fewer blow-ups, way fewer issues. And we, we for example, we, we, we've worked out um, an arrangement that, you, you know, that, that, that means we're going to do the bulk of our um, service and maintenance work on the new West Campus using Local 35. We were able to peacefully work through um, some changes in our work rules and hiring requirements and job descriptions that pertain not just to the West Campus but to the whole campus. Mm -hmm. As a consequence, you know, they wanted work there, we wanted some work rule changes and some position description changes, and we agreed.